to all our listeners and viewers and welcome to season one, Equality for All or Equality for None, under the episode Gender-Based Violence in Namibia. And I'm joined with a guest speaker today. Her name is um, Danisina. We know her as Danisina in the community, but I'm going to give her an opportunity to introduce herself. Danisina, how are you two today? <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. Yes. I'm very much happy and honored mm -hmm. to be on the show today. Yes. My name is, they call me Auntie Sina <laughs> because I'm a community development committee from the constituency uh, office of Comasa. Mm -hmm. So I'm working in the community directly with people. Yes. Learners, anyone you can name it. Yes. So I'm working with those people. Okay, and Auntie Sina, um, I informed you about the podcast well in advance um, being gender-based violence. Knowing how long I've worked with you, we've worked together for maybe more than five years, six years, but you know me since I was much smaller. Um, you've been working with my father as well. And so I want you to just maybe elaborate on your experiences in the community, not just recently, but also in past years in terms of gender-based violence. Yes, gender-based violence is taking place in in the area, not just in the area where I'm staying, but I think it's around town. Yeah. Uh, Comas, I can only speak about Comas because I'm living in Comas. I cannot speak from other constituencies that I really don't know, but gender-based violence is taking place on a daily basis. Yes. Doesn't matter if it's in silence or it's um, outside where people are fighting, the wife and the husband, or the kids against the father, the kids mm -hmm. against the mother, father and mother fighting or maybe sometimes you don't know what is inside yes the silence is also there but you will just observe sometimes things is not right in that household mm. something is wrong until the silence is break by the wife either mm -hmm. or by the kids who come and say no such a things my mother and father is always fighting yeah and that really it impact in my education that it also impact in my health and so on Yes. So uh, um, we will take it to the, uh, to maybe you can say sometimes we will take the cases to the police. Yes. So that those the police can come out and maybe they say gender based violence. If gender based violence is taking place, you will be arrested. Yes. Many people just went to the police station to open a case against the husband, mm -hmm. but after two or three minutes, one hour, they will withdraw the case. Yes. And then in the end of the day, you really see that the husband really killed the wife. Mm. So there was no need for the wife to, to yes. throw the case against the husband. Yes. So Auntie Sina, there, there's a stigma that gender-based violence mostly is induced on women. That is something that our society has said, the youth has said, but we, uh, we know of only reported cases, but you know of many unreported cases that is spread across male and female. And you have different age categories. Can you maybe tell us um, experiences you had, male and female, and the ages that you've experienced gender-based violence in? Most gender-based violence is in, in elderly people. It's not just in youth. Mm -hmm. They just say, no, the youth can be beat the girlfriend or... Men also has been abused. Mm -hmm. I know from a case of in my area, when the man went to the police station and make a case that his wife is abusing him. Mm. And that case was really not, it was like, a, it's a joke. Yeah. How can a man be being, being beaten up of by abuse by the woman yes. or his wife? So nothing happened to the case. Yes. And then I spoke to some of the officers, but this is a case, if the woman went there and yeah. said, my husband is abusing me, immediately you will take the case, the case and the case will be opened, yes. yes. So why not the men? So in, uh, I think most uh, cases happen in, uh, in the age of 30, 40. Mm. You can also say sometimes you see the, the husband is maybe elder than the wife in 50 to 60, mm -hmm. but gender-based violence is taking place. Yes. Gender-based violence is taking place because of uh, adultery. Yes. You will find my husband is having an affair with someone else, the neighbor or the something like that is where yes. gender-based violence is taking place. Gender-based yes. violence is also taking place when it comes to salaries. The wife is earning more than the husband. And mm. the husband feel feel betrayed. Why may a wife is earning a lot of money? Yeah, she's the one. Her, yeah. Yes, is the one buying food to be, uh, pay the bills, yeah. taking care of this and this. And he, in the end of the day, they feel he's left out because he cannot bring 
so much on the table. Yes. So it's where gender-based violence is also taking place. Yes. Now, Antisina, um, you also mentioned that gender-based violence is not just induced by people being violent. It starts off with either mental health issues that are unresolved. It starts with alcohol abuse, drug abuse, um, children having access to things they shouldn't be having access to because the education system is not up to par in your specific constituency. So maybe you can tell us what, what have you been experiencing? Because we also know that you have um, special kids in the community that are blind, autistic, deaf. And how does, how does the gender-based violence affect them? Can you maybe tell us what is the overall cause for alcohol-induced, mental health-induced, um, gender-based violence? And how does it affect the community and the children? It really affects the community, especially to the Linas. Linas is having when gender-based violence is taking place. Mm -hmm. The Linas, I cannot say Linas. Mm. They are now big people, mm. but they are Linas. They are our, our children, that mm. is the youth that yes. I'm speaking about. They will drop out of school. Mm. They will have, they have suicide thoughts mm. and things like that. In the end of the day, when the child drop out because of the situation and the gender-based violence in the house, he will start smoking drugs mm. or he will deal in drugs or he will sell drugs. Mm. Because he doesn't yeah. know of better. Exactly, yeah. because this, uh, the situation in the house is, 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 is tense. Yes. So uh, um, even the blind people in my area, they also been get abused. Mm. Because they cannot see, they cannot, they can talk, but they cannot see who is the one abusing him yes. or her. You, you also find minors, girls roaming around in the street, boys roaming around in the streets, mm. age of two, three, four. Mm. The parents are nowhere to be found. Mm. If you ask the child, where's my mother? She's at the, at the, at the drunk house. Those kids, those children, those minors also go through a lot of things that we don't know. Mm. Those kids can be raped. Boys also nowadays get be raped. Mm. So if you're talking about those things in your area, like blind people, that boy or the girl who cannot see is more in a dangerous... In a vulnerable and yes. dangerous environment. Yeah. Yes, because he can be, he can be raped. Yes. He can be, uh, uh, anything can happen to him. He will not know who's, who's, the, who's the person did to, to him. Yes. While he can talk, he cannot know because it's not that they know everyone in the area. He's just home sitting there. The parents go to work because he must eat. Although that is getting a, um, a, a um, disabled disability yes. grant. Yes, but that it, it's not enough for him to, mm. to sustain himself because they have to dress up, they have to do this, yes. one, two, and three, yes. Now, so, but, um, um, sorry to interrupt you. you have, we have regional councils in Namibia. And I know of the Commerce Regional Council that's around the corner from that specific um, constituency. Has yes. there been any intervention from social workers or um, maybe psychologists that have reached out to the community? Or is it usually the community that just right. gets referred and then they need to find their own way there? Yeah, uh, like us as leaders, you can take the case to the con constituency office. The councillor can. Right now, for three years, we don't have a, a, a social worker at the office. Yes. You will call social workers, you will call Minister of Gender, they will just advise you know, go to Grace Block where the offices are for the gender base and the, the uh, social workers. If you told the person, the lady of whoever you will told the mother, they will never went there because of transport. Mm. If you call back, they will say to no, know then. The, now I will be there by 9 o'clock or 10 mm. o'clock, they will make an appointment. That appointment will never Mm. happen it will never happen they will never turn up yes. the day after if you call the ad cell phone or the landline is unanswered yes. they will not answer so the situation remain as it is because there's no help and unresolved and because unresolved. there's no active yes. there's um, no active there's people. no active how can i say engagement no. from the government side in terms of the overall well-being of there's the people nothing that are marginalized yes sometimes yeah. also when you call there they will also told you, no, we don't have transport. Yes. The transport also freezes. It's only one vehicle, it's only one, and we cannot reach out to there. Yes. Now, my question is, how can we help the community if the lawmakers is there and cannot help? What mm. can we do as leaders? What can the office of the councillor do?
yes. to, to help those people. If the, if the Minister of Gender don't have transport, yes. the social workers don't have transport, the people who's in the situation, in that scenario, they don't have transport money to go there. What can we do? Does, so Antisina is telling me that even the people in positions to help, they don't have what the resources they need to reach out to you as a community? No, they don't have. And, and they will never turn up even if they say they will come tomorrow, what? Nothing will happen. Yes. So in, in, in conclusion, Tanisina, you would say that the constituency overall, the overall well-being in terms of even basic utilities like electricity and water, those basic needs have not even been, been met. And do those basic needs, those, those things that the people are lacking, do you think it also plays a role in their mental health and their morale and how they view everyone around them? And do you think that it also induces violence in the community? Yes. Yes, electricity is a very important thing. Mm. If you don't have electricity, you're hopeless. Mm. Nowadays, everything is online mm. and the people don't have access to electricity. Mm. So that is frustrated to the youth. They cannot apply for any job. They mm. cannot apply the to university. anything, yes. Mm. Even the facilities of water is also sometimes not there. Yes. How can you bath? When, even if you get, even if you are a domestic worker, you have to be clean, you have yes. to smell nice because you're working with kids, you're working with people. Yes. But how can the community uh, uh, help themselves if the government is not helping? Yes. If the city of Vanduk is not doing anything, how many times they have meetings with us? We resolve problems there. Now the new year will come, next month will come, but nothing will happen. Yes. Yes. So, Auntie Sina, if, if someone that is running for presidency, comes up to you and asks you what is the pressing issue in your constituency that you would want me to address as president, what would you say? Now I will say that the president must make the area, like us we are staying in the informal say, formal areas, mm. give us land, mm. make us comfortable with electricity, sanitations and those type of things so that we can also feel that you are a human being you're also important to anybody mm. Mm. yes right now you feel you are just on your own you are just there no one is taking care of you yes, yes. many kids many uh, there's elderly people who cannot even walk to long distance when nature is calling mm -hmm. and there's no toilets mm. what are you going to do what must those people do? Raping is there. You can go knock. You can go. You cannot go out ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. If you if you're having a problem with uh, mm. with anything, how can you go to the bushes at that time? Mm. The people will rape you. Yeah. Doesn't matter what age you are. Yes. You can be a minor. You can be a middle age. You can be a a, a, a pensioner. They will do whatever they feel mm. doing. So I call on those people. Really come out and see what is going on in the informal settlement. Yes. Maybe you will get a picture what the people are going through yes auntie sina i just want to thank you for being the leader that you are in the constituency and i'm so grateful that you could have a platform to be vocal about these things because you experience it on a daily basis yes. and it's also hard on you emotionally mentally and it's not easy to witness these things and not speak about them about so I, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that you could come and that you could have a platform where you feel free to express how you feel and make known the needs of the constituency of Siebenda in Afstalan. And I'd also like to remind the viewers and the listeners, this is only a very small percentage of Namibians, marginalized communities um, that are going through this. And we were focusing mostly on unreported cases. So wh wh what are we saying? That the reported cases are only the ones really deemed important? What about the unreported cases, the unreported crimes that are not being um, dealt with, right, Antisina? And you yes. could say that there are more unreported cases yes. that happen behind the scenes that yes. don't get addressed. The problem that we are also facing in the community as leaders, mm -hmm. I'm talking about my own experience. If a gender-based violence is taking place mm -hmm. in your area, mm -hmm. You will go and call the police, you know, I'm having people fighting, there's gender-based violence, there's domestic violence going on. Mm. You will wait for the police for hours. Yeah. And what makes me more angry is the respect that you're having for the community and the community, the respect to you. Later on, they will just say, ah, this auntie Sina is just talking, the police is not even taking a, a worry about. And then they won't respect yes, they you. Will, yes, yeah. because they will just take you as a simple person Yes. Or they will just not respect you at all because the police it is not coming. If you're yes. calling, they say they are on the way, but you will wait for two or three hours. Yes. The, the, the action is already done. The wife is maybe been knifed. 
the person is taken to the hospital by their own cars from mm. the community, mm. but not from the police. Yes. No, thank you so much, Danisina, for join, joining me today. And thank you that you are open and vocal. And we hope to hear from you very soon again. And um, Auntie Sina is also part of the Honeycomb Haven Foundation that caters for poverty alleviation. And I'm sure that she will also be a witness that the small things that we do as a foundation really makes an impact in the children's lives because it's very seldom that they get someone going out of their way to see them, their needs met, to see them happy, to make them feel like they're part of humanity, um, as we've spoken about. So as you've heard, not just from my own opinion, but a second opinion, gender-based violence it gets swept under the rug and the stigma of it being only female um, it's it's something that we need to break because they are men and we've seen how mental health is affecting the men in Namibia causing detrimental outcomes for them and so with that being said we need to understand that gender-based violence goes both ways and it affects both sides male and female and there should not be a uh, uh, stigmatized analyzing and um, assumption um, that's attached to human beings because at the end of the day gender-based violence is what it implies gender-based so it goes both ways across all sectors of humanity and that's what we're focusing on is how are we treating each other as human beings because at the end of the day you are a human being with a soul a mind and a body and if you do not go out of your way to ensure that those three are in equilibrium and they are healthy and you are healthy then it can only lead to like i mentioned detrimental outcomes so with that being said thank you so much for listening to episode three of unfaltered see you next time <laughs>